Good day. We have a video here which uh, is a recap of a, dis of a demonstration we had on um, vector fields or slope fields as they're also known. Um, and so it starts with uh, um, looking at some differential equations and solving differential equations the way we know how. Um, just a, a bit of uh, vocab and a bit of an explanation. I know this is flying by really quick but I'll, I'll uh, work this out in just a moment. Um, if we had a differential equation like the one shown, where dy dx equals negative x over y. We can find the general solution by separating the variables and integrating both sides. And we find that x squared plus y squared, um, actually, again, I should have fixed this one ahead of time, um, is supposed to be 2, or uh, sorry, 1 half y squared minus 1 half x squared equals c, and then we can double both sides of the equation, and, uh, and then we're going to have a different c value, but it's still a constant. So, um, sorry about the mix-up. Anyway, um, this is what we call the general solution to the differential equation, um, and what I showed is um, three different initial conditions, and depending on where we start, depending on our initial condition, it's going to change the value of the constant. So what I've done is demonstrated or illustrated three particular solutions to the differential equation shown. Each of these particular solutions is its own unique relation, but uh, they are all members of the same family from the general solution to the differential equation. So we can uh, represent those solutions graphically um, as circles. So we can um, go back and look at the differential equation that we started with. Um, dy dx equals negative x over y. That's the differential equation way of expressing circle. So these are two of the infinite circles that are described by that differential equation. Looking at another um, differential equation, or sorry, the same, I'm sorry, look at the exact same differential equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the assumption that we do not know um, what the solution is. Now again, I just solved using, um, using integration uh, techniques. I solved the differential equation, um, but let's just suppose that I didn't know what the solution to this differential equation is, but I do know some of the points or some points on the plane. Basically, what I'm going to do is create or generate a slope field by taking any point on the grid and establishing what the rate of change for that function is, or sorry, that relation is, um, at that point. So I start with a bunch of fixed values for y. I let y equal 2, and then I choose a variety of different x values, and I substitute both the x's and the y's. Um, hold on. I... Uh, I forgot how to change the color here. Let's well, see. Oh, oh well. I guess we're gonna have to have a white arrow for now. Um, anyway, the uh, the I put the uh, the x over the y gives me the slope, and I put the uh, x over the y gives me the slope. And so at negative two two, the uh, the the uh, solution to the differential equation is going to be increasing at a slope of one. So I just draw a little vector whose slope is one. At the point negative 1, 2, I find a slope of 1 half. So I find the point negative 1, 2, and I draw a little vector whose slope is 1 half. We have a um, slope of a tangent at 0 at the point 0, 2, and negative 1 half and negative 1. Now, I'm going to change the y values to 1 and produce a new set of vectors for each of the four points shown. So here again we have a steeper slope at uh, negative 2, 1 than we did at negative 2, 2 um, and the same thing in the opposite direction at 2, 1 instead of 2, 2. So here we've created a field of vectors and we could continue on with this algorithm and fill the entire page with vectors that show the direction of the solutions to this differential equation even though we don't have the full graph of each of those solutions. You can see here, this is starting to look kind of circular, like it's swishing around or something. And um, if we were to um, do another set for y equals 0, we'll see even more. Well, all of these are undefined, which when we look at circles, uh, the circles have vertical tangent slopes. 
are vertical tangent lines when they cross the x-axis. So that would explain why slopes are undefined when the initial condition has a y of zero. Instead of doing that by hand, we can find uh, um, you know, softwares that will do this for us. This is a free online um, differential equation slope field generator. And as you can see, just going from negative 5 to 5, we could see a, a series of vectors who um, all sort of form the concentric circles that make up the solutions to this differential equation. And those are the two circles that we found earlier. And here's another example, a better example, and we can see kind of how um, an, a particular solution uh, to the differential equation fits within the graph. Um, so here we're going to look at another more simple differential equation, and um, I, um, once again I want to look at the solutions. Um, I can find some particular solutions given different initial conditions and um, I can see that depending on the initial conditions we could have exponential growth or we could have um, the upside down version of exponential growth. I don't even know what that's called. Um, exponential negativity. And um, so here are two particular solutions to this differential equation. If I look at this on slope fields, what we could see is, depending on our initial condition, we'll have any number of exponential growth curves if our initial condition is above the x-axis, and uh, um, negative exponential growth, um, or exponential negativity, um, any, any place depending on our initial condition below the x-axis. So again, those are the two solutions that I found particularly, um, and you can see how they fit within the vector field. And here is a more a, a better graph of that same truth. Um, a very simple differential equation is dy dx equals negative sine of x. There we could do a quick integral and find that uh, y is going to equal the cosine of x. And if you look at this vector field, it looks like a bunch of cosines. In fact, um, here is one cosine, and um, depending on my initial condition, the cosine graph is either going to be shifted up or shifted down. But regardless, there's always going to be that cosine wave given a, a differential equation of the sine or opposite of sine of x. So this is kind of like um, a little bit more familiar and make you feel a little bit better about slope fields. They're not that mysterious. Um, but some differential equations um, are not as easy to solve in particular. Um, we have this one, dy dx equals x minus y, and there's some goofy stuff going on here. I found um, on Wolfram um, one particular solution to this uh, differential equation, and it produced a graph just like this. Um, there are other graphs that look like the other colors that I drew in here. Uh, all depending on our initial condition, we're going to get some kind of general behavior like that according to the vector field that's presented. Um, here again is one. This one actually, um, when I uh, solved this one, um, there's a variety of different kinds of equations that end up. The, the one particular solution actually has an exponential um, a negative exponential function that's been added in or mixed in with this parabola. There was another particular solution that was just a parabola. It was x squared plus 2x plus 2. It was a really simple. Um, so there's a variety of different kinds of particular solutions depending on the nature of the differential equation that you're given. This last one is uh, a default differential vector field. Um, and this one I tried to solve on Wolfram and it wouldn't give me a very nice looking solution. It involved this long uh, drawn out thing. Um, but just to show you that solvable or unsolvable differential equation doesn't matter. You can create a slope field for any differential equation using a technique illustrated in this video. So once again, all you have to do is just pick a series of y values and then provide different x values and look at the slope of each and then map out those slopes accordingly so that you can uh, create a whole field of slopes, a field of vectors. There you go. Have a great day.